All right, team, here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. I am your host, Jay Nixon, and I'm glad you're here. Today's episode is going to be hot. I promise you that. The title of it is From Fat to Fit as Blank. You know what I'm talking about. And it's my personal story. It's my personal journey from being called Fat Boy to living one of the healthiest lifestyles and be one of the fittest people that I know. Before we jump into that, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, which is these baby blue eyes that I'm rocking. I can, you, can blue eyes sponsor a podcast? If it's your podcast, they can. And the reason for that is when I wear a blue shirt like this, if you're watching on YouTube, guys, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, or somewhere else, you don't get this, but you can always slide over to Thrive Forever Fit Show on YouTube and you'll understand what I'm saying. So as my man Dave Portnoy from uh, the El Prez from Barstool Sports says, he calls his, his eyes Fiji underwater bungalow blue. When I wear a blue shirt like this, these jokers just pop. Um, YouTube actually asked me, they're like, hey, please stop wearing blue when you do these because we are getting inundated with um, claims that we are magnifying and enhancing the color of your eyes. And you know, it's, listen, they're not. This is just what happens. I'd like to give a shout out for this t-shirt. Feel free to send gifts, first and foremost. I'm a medium. Shout out to this t-shirt, my amazing client, Ashley Husted. I, I screw last names up. Husted, H-U-S-T-A-D. She is the top real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. I don't know if that's true. I know she's a real estate agent. I assume she's the top because she's amazing. She sent me this rock star shirt from her realty group. So Ashley, super shout out to you. You are awesome. You know, I think you're amazing. And if you're not the top real estate agent, you better be soon because I just gave you that. I just gave you that title and you know, I'm not one to give out a title that you don't deserve. So let's go get it. All right, guys, let's jump into the show. So like I said, I'm going to walk you through today, my journey, my personal journey from being called fat boy to being one of the fittest people I know. And here's what I want you to know, first and foremost, because a lot of people don't know this about me. If you've just met me now, if you just saw me over the course of the last few years, if you've just stumbled upon my podcast, my YouTube channel, my fitness studio, see me on Instagram, on Facebook, you probably think, well, this dude's been fit forever. That's not the case. I'm telling you that's not the case. This has been a journey for me. So first and foremost, I want you to know this. If you're overweight, if you're struggling with your weight, if you simply don't like the way you look and feel, I understand. There's a shitload of quote unquote fitness and nutrition gurus and coaches that don't have a snowball's clue in hell what it is like to be overweight, what it's like to be called fat boy, what it's like to be embarrassed of how you look and feel and shamed and bullied. I've been all those things. I don't just understand, I really understand. I know what it feels like to binge eat an entire bag of chips, cookies, a pint of ice cream, hell, hell with a pint, I mean, everybody does a pint, a gallon of ice cream, I've done them all, guys. I know what it feels like to be shamed and bullied for being fat. I know what it's like to have the people that you care about most in your life call you fat boy. Like, I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to look different. I know what it's like to feel different. I know what it's like to be different. So I get you. And this is why I do what I do. This is why I wrote my first book, The Overweight Mind. This is why I wrote my second book, The Purpose of Pain, because I get you. And I don't want you to struggle anymore because I'm not struggling anymore. That fat boy shit, that doesn't get me anymore. I'm not down about it. It drives me. It's why I am who I am today. So if, you, if you're listening and you ever call me fat boy, thank you. Because I am where I am today because of people like you, people that motivated me to do something different. And we're going to get into why I was a fat boy in this episode. We're going to go deep. Off the script, I have no script in front of me. I got nothing, guys. I'm going to go straight from the gut, straight from the heart. I don't even know where this is going to end up. Hopefully, it ends up somewhere that gives you some value. But the most important thing I need you to know, the reason I do what I do, the reason I own a gym, the reason I, I created the most inclusive supportive, accountable, understanding, lifestyle transformation program, the Thrive Forever Fit program on the planet. The reason I dedicate myself to this game is because I don't want you to feel like you're in this fight alone. Because for a long time, I felt like I was in the fight alone and I had to figure it out on my own. And I don't want you to have to do that. So I don't care where you fall in the spectrum. I don't care if you're 200 pounds overweight or if you're 10 pounds overweight. 
If you feel me, you feel me. If you get this, you get this. If you don't, maybe you want to listen anyway so you can understand how people in this place feel, how people who've been in this place feel, how I feel, how maybe somebody you know feels. This might be good for you as well. So saddle up, guys. Let's go. It's going to get, it's going to get deep. We're going to get personal. I'm going to talk about some shit I've probably never talked about publicly before. And my, my number one goal here is this, as always, I want to bring you extreme value. I want you to get value out of this podcast so that you can take the tools that I give you to disrupt the way you're currently living. And if you're living shamed and bullied and feeling like shit, not liking the way you look, being ashamed, being embarrassed, being scared, being all those things, I want to disrupt that. I want to change that for you. I want to inspire you to know that you don't have to feel that way anymore. And I want to give you the tools. And I can't give them all to you on this podcast. It'd be a 77-hour podcast. But I want to give you tools that will help you transform. And the first tool is this, I believe in you. That's the first and most important tool that you need to have in your toolbox. I believe in you. Somebody who's been where you are believes in you. And I know you don't have to be there anymore if you make that decision that you don't want to be. And I also know what it feels like. And I know how bad it sucks and how bad it hurts to feel different. I know what it's like to be bullied for being fat. I know what it's like to be called fat boy, fat whatever. And I get you. We're no longer going to use that as failure. We're no longer going to use that as a way to keep us down. You're going to use that as fuel to start living the life that you really deserve and desire. See, guys, I know what it's like to think about the shit that you'll never say. See, when I grew up, a lot of you guys know this. My dad got killed when I was five years old. And I don't know for a fact that I wouldn't have been a fat boy if my dad had have, had have lived and whatever. But I know that one of the reasons that I headed down the path that I headed down was because of that, because I didn't understand how to deal with my emotions. I was five years old, six years old, seven years old. So my, my fat period was probably from the time, I mean, I was a 10 pound baby. So I was, I was predisposed to be a big cat, but nobody in my family was overweight. My brother was very lean. My mother was very small. My dad was a stocky husky guy, but he was not overweight. You look at my family reunion pictures, nobody was overweight, but I was a chunky kid. I was a fat kid and I was fat because I didn't know what, I didn't know how to handle my emotions. And this is really kind of the, the, the ethos of everything I talk about. Whether you're 50 or you're five, if you don't know how to handle your mindset, if you don't know how to handle the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions and the anger and the upset and the scared and the fear that you have, you will turn to something. Some of us turn to food. I was five. That was kind of my only alternative. I didn't have booze, right? I couldn't start gambling. I couldn't get any other weird addiction going. Food was the thing. So I remember being fat and chubby and embarrassed. You talk about one of the most, I wrote about this in my first book. Whenever you, I was growing up, they used to make us play shirts and I'm going to be all over the place today, guys, because when a thought comes, I'm going to tell you a story, Okay. That's just how this one's going to go. I hope it ends up being something smoothed out at the end where you get this, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit so you can find yourself inside of my story so that you can know that there's a way out. So I remember playing, being, being in school, like even in elementary school, shirts versus skins, like they'd let you take your shirt off as a boy, like on the playground. I mean, I'm sure they probably don't do that anymore, but shirts versus skins, I was terrified that I was going to get on skins. I would do anything to not get on skins. Did not want to do, I do I'm telling you, terrified. Go, we had, so in Cisco, where I grew up, it's a town of about 4,000 people. The only thing to do in the summer after you get your chores done is go to the pool, go to the swimming pool, right? We had this giant, big ass pool in Cisco, high dive, low dive, every kind of, that's just where you went. That's what you did. I was terrified to go to the swimming pool, embarrassed to go to the swimming pool. Embarrassed about the way that the waistband of my swim trunks made my belly fall over my, my shorts. Embarrassed that I had love handles as a seven, eight, nine, ten 10-year-old kid. Embarrassed of that. I can visually see it right now. I can visually, I can feel it inside my body right now. Like that, the fat boy that I used to get called still lives in my brain. And he's part of the motivation of why I do what I do today because I never want to feel that way again. Not because of the way people made me feel. I didn't feel good about myself. I wasn't handling my own shit. And again, I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to handle my own stuff. So I turned to food. I remember guys as a kid, I remember going in the kitchen, making sure my mom or my brother didn't see me. 
in like getting like three and four and five cookies and like shoving two cookies in my mouth. So that if anybody saw me, they'd only see like the one or two cookies in my hand, not knowing that I just shoved like three or four or five in my mouth and ate them as fast as I could. Why was I doing that? I don't know. I don't know why I was doing that. I think I was just, it was the only thing in my life I could control. And then, then we'll flip to another skit. I remember this, like my brother's six years older than me. And so when you're scared and you feel alone and you feel ashamed and you whatever, like you want to, you want to be cool, especially, but my brother's one of the one people that used to call me fat boy. All I wanted him to do was think that I was cool like him. That's it. When you're six years younger than that, you just want your older sibling to think you're cool. You just want him to, to love you and blah, 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 blah. And not that my brother didn't love me, but that was super painful for me to be called fat boy by somebody that I loved. But so he would eat, he, you know, he, he could eat anything he wanted. He could eat seven hamburgers and not put on a pound. So we would, we would order food or something or go out to eat and he would order two of something. He'd get two hamburgers. And I'd be like, well, I want two hamburgers. And God only knows why my mother let me order two hamburgers. I have zero idea, but I would eat to try to match what he ate because I thought I was for some, in my mind, in my like five, six, seven, eight year old mind, that made sense right? That doesn't make any sense, right? We know now that doesn't make any sense. And if you saw a young boy doing that, if you have a kid, guys, I'm going to speak to a lot of different angles today. This is for moms and dads with kids. This is for a big kid like me. I'm going to be 46 years old in October. And you still feel that thing. This is for you. This is for the moms and dads that have young kids right now. If you have a young son or daughter that's overweight, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm ultra sensitive to this. So I hope you guys understand that everything I'm saying right now is with empathy and with love and with just 100% like caring. Your kid does not want to be overweight. And they're never gonna tell you that. Some of them might, but very rarely. I never told my mom how I felt. I never told my mother that I was embarrassed to go to the swimming pool, that I was embarrassed that I had to wear husky jeans, that I was embarrassed, that I just felt fat all the time. Guys, my entire sixth grade year, I grew up in Texas, West Texas. In the summer, it's hot as shit. My entire sixth grade year, I wore a maroon hoodie year round from, from day one to the end of the end of the year. Every day I wore a maroon hoodie, something to cover up my body. I was in the sixth grade. I don't even know how old you are when you're in the sixth grade, but too damn young to be that damn ashamed of the way that I felt. And I never told a soul. I never told a friend. I never, one of the pictures that I, from my youth that haunts me to this day is when I was in the sixth grade, I jumped off of a house because that's what you do when you're a dumbass kid. And I broke the growth plate in my foot. And so the growth plate in your foot, you know, eventually when you get to a certain size, your growth plates kind of seal up and you, they don't grow anymore, right? That's why you get size whatever feet or your bones grow to the size. You have growth plates all over your body. Anyway, broke a growth plate in my foot and had to get a cast on for like six weeks. And I couldn't, um, I grew up in a house, we didn't have a shower. We just had bathtubs. And so I couldn't give myself a bath. So I had to wear shorts and then I had to put a trash bag over my, if this is back in the day when casts were like, I mean, you got a cast on, it was like having a 50 pound lead ball attached to your, to your leg. So I've got this cast on, I've got shorts on, I'm in the bathtub and my mom's trying to help me. I'm doing the best that I can. And for some God, I have no reason, idea why this happened. Somebody took a picture of me in this and I'm just, I'm just sitting in the bathtub, broken leg, cast on, trash bag on it, gym shorts on. And I just remember looking so fat, so chubby and just so embarrassed. When I saw that picture, it makes me cringe to this day. And I never said a word about it. But I felt like that for the majority of my young life. It wasn't until I got really into sports, like in high school, that I started to lean out a little bit. But I would still consider myself chubby, even through high school. Never felt very confident, never felt very accepted, never felt like I was going to be, I just never felt good about myself because I always felt like I was still that same fat boy, even when I started to lean out, even when I started to get uber into fitness. And when I, get, when I, stopped, when I, when I stopped playing college football, I got uber into like lifting weights and being fit and like, you name it. And if you listen to last week's um, podcast, you know that I took a, another extreme turn 
when I got into the fitness and nutrition world of taking supplements that were really toxic to my body. So I went from one extreme to the next. I went from extreme of overeating to an extreme of probably under eating and over supplementing with things that were just causing my body havoc. I mean, for the first 25 years of my life, I treated my body like a garbage can from both extremes, overeating, under eating, over supplementing, overworking out, not sleeping. I mean, literally for the first 25 years of my life, guys, I abused my body like you wouldn't believe. And it's probably why I have half the shit going on with me that I have going on now. But I can tell you this, the reason that I know looking back, and hindsight's always 2020, and I'm just, I just want to shed a little light on the way some people feel the way they feel. And some of you guys right now are 50 years old, and you're still struggling like I used to struggle. And I want you to know, guys, that you don't have to do that. If there's somebody in your life that's keeping you held down, and it may be yourself, it got to a point where I was the one keeping me held down. Like those fat boy comments were just comments. They were just words. But I took those words and I let them manifest into bad behaviors. I took those words and let them manifest into binge eating. I took those words and let them d develop me into somebody that I wasn't, somebody that I wasn't designed to be. And it wasn't until I got clarity around that that I started, to, I started working on the, the only thing that mattered and that was my own self-worth. See, I didn't feel valuable. When we don't feel valuable in life, we tend to do crazy shit. Many of us turn to food. Guys, I'm, I mean, I can tell you stories of like the shit I used to eat. And listen, this was a long time ago. I mean, I was born in 1974. So I remember like, instead of just eating one TV dinner at night, my mom, was, my mom worked a lot. She put herself to school, amazing human. Without my mother, I would not be here today. But some of the options for me were TV dinners for a lot of my life. I was home alone. Instead of eating just one TV dinner, I would eat two TV dinners. Why? because I could control it. I felt so out of control in my life. I felt so out of control, misunderstood, didn't know how to process my feelings, didn't know how to speak to about my feelings, didn't even know if anybody gave a shit about my feelings because I felt so shitty about myself. How could anybody else ever even care about me enough to want to help me? That's where my mindset was. So right now when I'm talking to you guys, whether you're 50 or you have a, a five or six or seven or eight or 10 or 12 year old, you may be, they may be unable to express what it is that they're really feeling of why it is they're really doing what they're doing. Listen, nobody wants to be 50 pounds overweight, whether you're a 10 year old or whether you're a 50 year old, you don't want to be that. But something inside of you is not giving you the power to feel worthy enough to overcome that. It wasn't until guys that I began to work on myself that I began to work on my own mindset, not my mindset that was predicated on what other people thought of me or what other people said to me or what other people believed about me, but my mindset related to how, who I knew I was supposed to be, who I knew I deserved to be, how healthy I knew I wanted to be. And I didn't have all the answers. It's the re I mean, listen, and you don't have to make the radical shift that I made and dedicate your entire life to fitness and nutrition and to wellness and to studying and to making sure that you know all of the ins and outs of, of the things you're putting inside of your body and the output that you're giving from your body. You don't need to do that. But what you need to do is you need to start to work on your mental game more than your physical game. I had a client today come into me and said, you know, I've, I've been working with a nutritionist and she's got me intermittent fasting. And she said, oh, well, as long as you're intermittent fasting, it doesn't matter how many calories you eat. Just eat as much as you want. And she said, well, I've been doing it for six months and I haven't lost a pound. This is a professional giving them advice. That's how damaging this world that we live in is. This is how the misinformation of the world that we live in. I know I'm taking a little bit of a tangent here, but what I want you to understand is you don't have to know everything, but what you have to find, and I'm not saying it has to be me, but find somebody who understands what it is that you're going through. Because I blatantly just looked at the client in the face and I said, I, I hate that you were told that, but that's not a true statement. That's unfortunately not a true statement. If you're eating that many calories and you're not expending enough calories, your body only has one option to do with those extra calories and that's gonna to be to store it as fat. So if your desire is to lose weight, you are going to have to get your portion sizes under control. 
You can intermittent fast all day. And, and her, her, her next response to me was like, well, what if I just do keto or guido or paleo or some other damn diet in the midst of that intermittent fasting? I said, it won't matter. See, what, you, what you're not wrapping your head around is it's the caloric intake that's the issue. It's not the food necessarily, because she said, I'm eating super healthy. You can overeat anything. You can overeat healthy foods. And so my point to go back to where it is we came from is you don't need to know everything, but you need to make sure that if you really want out, if you really want to, to no longer manage the life that you're managing, because really life's not about management. And that's what I did for 25 years. I managed my life poorly, really poorly. I, would have, I should have fired my ass a long time ago. It wasn't until, until I got... I, did, I made corrective measures on the value, my self-awareness and my self-worth about why I was doing the things I was doing. And I came to the conclusion that I was eating the way I was eating because it was the only thing in my life that I felt like I had control of. And I'm not saying that if you have an overweight child right now, or if you're an overweight person, that you necessarily had to go through some kind of major trauma or drama or whatever. Guys, we have, our, we have six human needs. One of the number one human need we have is the need for certainty, okay? Some of you guys are choosing your control mechanism for certainty under the foods that you're eating because even though you don't like where you are, you're certain about what it is that you are going to be if you keep doing what it is you're doing. Now, if that didn't make any sense, I'll break that down just a little bit further. The unknown and the challenge of what it's going to feel like for you because we, have, we're, we live in a world now where we've been, pre, we've been predisposed to bad information. We've been predisposed to a lot of lies and BSs and half-truths about how difficult it has to be to lose weight. You have to do this diet, take this pill, work out for this many hours, stand on your head and count to 76. Like so many bullshit things are out there that we've been exposed to that we have now created this conditioning that it has to be hard. Can I tell you all I did? All I did, guys, was I stopped reacting to every emotion that came into my brain through the directive of food, meaning I wasn't responsible for reacting to everything that I didn't know how to process. I wasn't respect, re responsible for reacting to every time I felt sad or angry or upset or any of those things. I wasn't responsible for reacting to those things. And my reactionary method, some people it's, it's, some people it's anger, some people it's, it's gambling, some people it's alcohol, some people it's you name it. There's so many different addictions out there. For me, it was food. I controlled my emotional well-being with a bag of blank, with, a, with an order of this, with a drive through window of that. And I was able to justify it by saying, this is how, I, this makes me feel good. And you know what? It didn't make me feel good. I know what it's like to eat that entire bag of chips or that entire bag of cookies. I know what the feeling like is afterwards. In the moment, you almost black out. You almost go into a, into a, a blackout binge, if you will. But I know what it feels like afterwards. I know, what it feels like the, I know what it feels like a minute after. I know what it feels like 10 minutes after. I know what it feels like the next morning after when you try to put your pants on and they don't fit like you want them to fit. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to feel different, guys. So I, I, I gave myself what can, what's called body dysmorphia disorder. I've never, I don't think I've ever spoken about this publicly. So what people see me as, I don't see. And I won't say that happens all the time, but I go through these bouts of where I feel like that fat boy again. And I, I feel like, like I'm overweight and I feel like um, I'm, I'm out of control and I feel like I don't have control over, over what's going on, how my body feels and looks and, and it's all psychological. If I took a picture of myself on the days that I was feeling that way versus the days that I didn't feel that way, I would look exactly the same. Exactly the same. And luckily, you know, I, the only person I really talked to it about is Lori. Um, I just tell her, I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going through one of those weird fucking, and it doesn't make any sense. But instead of getting sabotaging, so what I used to do when I felt like that is I would sabotage myself, not with food, but I, I flipped the script. I would deprive myself. I would starve myself. Not really, I wouldn't even say starve. I would deprive myself of food 
And then I would work out like an animal. I'm talking like three times a day to a point of sheer exhaustion where every piece of my body felt like it could fall off at any moment. I don't do that anymore. Right? I, don't, I don't do that because I understand that it's simply a mindset thing. It's simply a psychological, it's an old pattern is what it is. I developed a, I'm, I, there's an old pattern that runs in my brain and there's an old pattern that probably runs in your brain. And that's why we get stuck in these things. And so what you need to do is if you've got old patterns running, if you've got old systems running in your brain, we've got to begin to upgrade those patterns. We've got to be able to get you new habits and rituals and standards because you, you're always going to fall back to your habits, guys. All binge eating was for me was a habit. I felt like this, I ate that. And I also felt like I could out-exercise a bad diet. And I never, I'm just never successful at that ever. So those of you guys that think you can pull that off, it's not, you can't do it. I promise you I've worked out harder than you. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I've, I've been working out since I was in the sixth grade trying to overcome this. I'm happy to say I'm, I'll be 46 on October 3rd. Send gifts, medium, love blue. Um, I'm happy to say that I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty solid. I'm pretty buttoned up when it comes to my psychological self-awareness, my psychological self-worth. Um, but I want to be, I want to be very honest. It's, it's every, every day is an opportunity for all of us. Every day I get the opportunity to fall back into an old pattern, an old belief system that let that body dysmorphia kick in where I feel like that I'm not in good enough shape. I feel like I'm not fit enough. I feel like I'm this and that, or I have the ability to understand that that is an old bullshit story that I used to tell myself. I'm no longer, I'm no longer responsible for believing and reacting to that old story. See, that's what we do is we, we believe and we react to old stories. I'll be honest with you. Most of the time we don't even believe them, but we will damn sure react to them. You know why? Because it's safe. And you're like, what do you mean it's safe? It's safe because we know the outcome. Like right now, if you're 50 pounds overweight and you keep doing the exact same thing that you've been doing, you know the outcome. You know what it's like. And even though it's not the desired outcome, there's a safety mechanism in there for you. See, the uncertainty that comes along with Losing that 50 pounds is, well, what if I gain it back? Well, what if, I, what if this happens? Well, what if it's this? Well, what if it's that? Well, what if it's it? We will what if ourselves out of everything. I've been there. I get you. I feel you. Here's what, I, here's what you have to know. The most important thing that I did, guys, the most important thing that I did is I started surrounding myself with people who believed in me more than I believe in myself. You've heard me, if you've, know, if you've listened to me for any amount of time at all, if you've read The Overweight Mind, you know that I give, um, I give a, an immense amount of credit to my significant other, Lori, for believing in me more than I believed in myself and giving me the place and the space to transform into the human that I was supposed to be. You see, I'll tell you this, I always, and like, this is going to sound crazy. You know, some of you guys will understand this, some of you won't. I always thought I was supposed to be great. And I'm not saying I'm great today. I'm on a journey. I'm on a, I'm on a trajectory of life that I love and I, I want to be great. And that's where I'm at today. I don't feel like I'm great at all, but I always thought I was supposed to be great. And I don't mean that by being great, by being better than someone else. I always thought my life was supposed to be awesome. Even as a little, even as a fat kid, even when I was outside playing basketball and baseball and football by myself, throwing the ball, trying to run and catch it, I always envisioned myself as the champion. I always envisioned myself as the winner. I always envisioned myself as on top. I always, I always knew that I was supposed to live a life of greatness. And I believe that for everybody. I believe everybody is designed to live a life of greatness. But a lot of times we let the stuff get in the way. For a long time, I let that stuff get in my way. I was not living my best life. I wasn't my best Jay. I wasn't my best human. I wasn't my best anything. It wasn't until I got self-awareness around that and I started developing my own level of self-worth that I started to make a shift and a change. And I can tell you today, completely eradicated that old fat boy mindset. Like I said, he's still there. He's still with me. But now he's fuel. He's not failure. He's fuel for me to keep going and to keep being great. He's a reminder of, you've already done that, bro. You've already lived that life. You know what that feels like. Keep going. Be great. 
Like, you know what it's going to feel like to be great? And when I say great, I mean great in my own perspective, great in my own journey. No one else's journey, my journey. That's where I'm designed to be great at. That's where you're designed to be great at. But the most important thing that I did is I, I, I got lucky enough. I got lucky. The day I met Lori, I got lucky. And I was smart enough to know there's something about this joker. And I'm not about to fuck this up. And I did. The day I've been with her the, since the day I met her. She may disagree with that for a day or two. Uh, maybe take a little bit more time. I've been with her since the day I met her. And she's the reason that I, that I, that I made that shift. It was, the, it was the, the alignment piece that I was missing from my own life. See, I believed in myself. I did, but I didn't believe in myself enough to make those hard decisions at the end of the day. I would always fall back to an old way of conditioning. Always. But when I met her, something clicked in me. It put me into that, that, that two degrees that I was off. It shifted me back over into perfect alignment and my life has never been the same. Now I'm able to use those past things as fuel. I'm able to be somebody that I know I'm supposed to be. So the whole point of this podcast, guys, is I want you to know that no matter where you're at, no matter what level of fitness you're at, no matter what level of fitness you want to be, you can make a difference. You can make a change in your life by simply making the decision to start surrounding yourself with people that believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And here's what I would, here's what the one thing I would suggest you do. Find that person that you can tell that shit to. See, I didn't have that person for a long time. And when you tell that shit to yourself over and over again, you'll convince yourself that you're not worth it. You'll convince yourself that, oh, I'm just, this is safer. I'm going to stay here. This, you'll convince yourself. You'll convince yourself. You'll convince yourself. Find somebody that convinces you to be different. Just through their presence, just through their words, through their actions, who you are when you're around that person, how that person makes you feel. Because you're worth it, but a lot of times we don't believe we're worth it. So my suggestion is for you, I would get myself, a, I'd get myself, a, if you're lucky, if you can be lucky like me and get yourself a badass significant other that just, she didn't even know she did have to shit for me. Just being around her was enough to turn the key. It made me do things differently. But if you don't have that, if you're not lucky enough to have that, and I'm not saying your significant other's not amazing. Some people, I was ready. I was on, I was so close. I was two degrees off. All I did is shift a tiny bit. So I can tell you, that they're out there. There's coaches out there. There's mentors out there. There's groups out there. I believe that I have the most supportive, the best, most accountable, most amazing, all-inclusive lifestyle transformation group on the planet. I would challenge anybody to challenge me on that. It's called Thrive Forever Fit. If you're interested, pop over. We'll, we'll have a chat. If you want to start softer than that, I've got a free place for everybody to go. Everybody listening right now, if you're not a member of my Wellness Lab Launchpad, you're doing yourself a disservice because there's people in that group just like you. I'm in that group. I'm just like you. And I'm there to help you. I do live videos. I do live trainings. I answer questions out the wazoo. I'll be that person that you can tell that shit to that you won't tell anybody else because maybe you don't know how. Maybe you're afraid of how they're going to react. Maybe, they're afraid, maybe you're afraid of how you're going to react. I'll be that person for you because I've been there. I've been exactly where you are. I know exactly how you feel. And I don't want you to feel that way anymore. Wellness Lab Launchpad on Facebook. It's my free group. The easiest thing to do is go to my website. Go to thriveforeverfit.com. You'll see a, scroll down a little bit. You're gonna see a big picture of me, baby blue eyes. Don't get stuck there. A lot of people get stuck right there. Then they forget why they're there. I need you to scroll a little bit. There's going to be a giant box. It says Wellness Lab Launchpad, giant orange box. It says join now. Click the join now button. Get in there. And don't just get in there. Let me know you're there when you're there. Let me know what you need. Ask those questions. Be involved in that group. Let me help you. Let me be that person for you that I didn't have for so long. Deal? Guys, I hope there was value. I know this was a little bit rambly. I know there's a little bit some disjointed conversations. This was really about letting you understand you're not alone. Letting you know that you don't have to be that fat boy, fat girl, fat, whatever it is you felt before. You can be as fit as you want to be. And I'm living, breathing proof of that. 
So my goal, my mission, my purpose, like I said earlier, is to disrupt the way you think, inspire you to think differently, which I hope I did today, and give you the tools to transform. And the number one tool you need is to know that I believe in you. All right, guys, I love you. I'm going to see you again soon. Have an awesome day and be awesome to each other. Okay, bye.